I come up with a past Patrick series again. There is a demand for the Ask Patrick series purely because a lot of people require advice. Ask Patrick series is a series where you ask me questions and I try to answer to my best of my ability. The question now that I received is how do I identify easy DIL assets in the exam? So we all know that in the actual exam there are two sets of DIL. You crack those two sets, you are 80 percentile is assured. The key is to identify at least those two sets and crack it. And maybe yes, identify the easier sets of remaining and try to get more percentile. And the most important part is identifying the sets, easier sets in the exam. Is there a method? There are a lot of cues. I'm not saying there are no cues. For example, one common cue is if there's an if statement question as an if, it could make it tough. Or the question is a long, the, naturally it takes a longer time to solve the question, question itself. If the data is long, it may take a longer time to read the data. So there are always this question. Also the cue saying that I'm good at this particular topic and I'm not good at that particular topic. That is also but I normally and strongly recommend not to have these cues in place. Okay? Unless uh, you're sure that this will work. Because I've seen a lot of time these cues not working. For example, if question, there is an if question, but the set is very easy and you can easily solve the if question. And if such a question comes into the exam and you miss it, you miss the easy set. You feel the set is a little longer, but could be easy. Or you said, okay, this is a topic like I've seen last, last time some people came back and told me, oh, it is a DIS set and I thought it would be tough and I left it, or it turned out to be really easy. So what happens is when you categorize things in your mind saying that this would be tough, this is easy, you already decide that those are tough before even you start reading. So then it becomes very difficult to choose those sets in the exam. Right? So ideally, the best way is not to keep the cues in the exam when you try to solve it. So how do you go about it? How do you identify sets? I normally prefer that keep your open mind and try to solve. Okay, when you're solving the sets, try as far as possible being in the open mind. Okay, and when you're reading a set, read with an open mind and then try to solve. You should be able to identify when set is tough or easy within one or two minutes, max. One to two minutes. So every set, go to it for at least one minute and maximum two minutes. And in that one or two minutes, you should be able to identify the set is easy or tough. If you want to jot down the points, do anything that you want, read a set, try to read a set as if you're going to solve the set. And after that, decide, oh, this is tough or this is easy. Tough, leave it, easy, solve it. And what happens with this is that um, it ensures that you don't miss out on easy sets. Okay, And that's very important in the examination. Right? And at one to two minutes is approximately 12 minutes for the eight sets. The 12 minutes is the investment that you make for the 48 minutes of solving that you're going to do. Yes, now that one to two minutes you can do at a start, or you can break them into two parts, first four sets start, first four sets, next four sets later, or you can do it as and when you're solving it. How you decide on that one or two minutes, you can decide based on your strategy. If you're solving more number of sets in the examination, the time basis is less in that one, two minutes. Okay, because if you're from 8, you're going to solve 4. That means the time ratio is only on the 4 sets which you're going to read, which is 8 minutes. So it's fine. And if you're solving less sets, it's all the more important for you to select the right sets. In that case, you have to read and pick up your easy sets. So in either case, it's very important that you read and try to get the easy sets. And that will help you to do better. Hope that helps. Thank you.